Thank you. Yeah. So might I ask immediately uh, to introduce a little bit about yourself? Because I've seen that you're the lead of uh, Unity, of course, but you do also do other projects as well. Yeah, so uh, I'm basically uh, a Linux dev. I develop uh, Linux tools, distros, and other stuff. Like I'm the developer of Ubuntu Unity, uh, Ubuntu Web, uh, Unity X, Ubuntu, uh, etc. So, like for example, I released Unity 7.6 this week, and I just released another project named uh, Modern uh, just yesterday, which is basically a new store. Uh, which is completely different from existing stores for the apps. Yeah, that's a lot of projects actually. That's something that uh, I, I don't know if I would be able to keep up with. Like I, I just do one, and that's me for that's it for me. How do you like maybe keep track of time and how to contribute? Like how to have the time actually to contribute to various projects. Yeah, so uh, like I'm 12 years old and I do need to go to school too. So yeah, uh, in my spare time, for example, uh, uh, um, I spend most of the time on Ubuntu Unity and Ubuntu Web. And then uh, on the secondary projects like Puna and uh, Game Ubuntu Modern. So I'm working on those uh, when uh, say, uh, there's no release of Ubuntu Unity or the Ubuntu Web that is coming up. Okay, that makes sense. And you're also doing a store for um, a new store I, I've seen? Yeah. What, what, what's, so, yeah? Yeah, so it's basically uh, a Linux store in which it does support uh, snaps, flat packs, devs, uh, like most of the stores. But uh, but uh, the thing, the difference is that, uh, first of all, you can, uh, uh, you can submit your own apps to the store unlike other stores so that you do not have to submit it to a repository. Uh, for example, in the case of their packages, because it is really hard for people to be able to publish their system apps, for example, the, uh, system tools, because, yeah, it is easy to uh, publish flat packs and snaps, but uh, they're sandbox and it is an... Um, and many system tools simply cannot uh, cannot run uh, inside those inside the inside the sandbox. So yeah, um, so you can basically publish devs and various other types of apps in the store directly instead of going to a depository and the lending publishing process. Okay, understood. So these are the things you're working on. So related about Ubuntu Unity itself, there has been a, re um, a new release recently. Can you quickly tell us what's new for those that maybe haven't seen it? Yeah, so uh, we just released uh, Unity 7.6 and Ubuntu Unity 22.04. So uh, Unity 7.6 is basically like the first update apart from 7.5.1 uh, in six years, like I mentioned in the blog post too. So we have made a number of changes, uh, some uh, bugs which were present for a long time, like the trash icon not working, uh, and and uh, and the redesign of some of the outdated elements like menu items in the launcher, uh, the launcher hard, and yeah, so uh, we have made many changes and we have fixed bugs and added features to Unity 7 in 7.6. Okay, and I'm wondering uh, from people like I, I might see people seeing this project with Unity, actually asking themselves uh, why Unity, after it was a bit abandoned by Ubuntu itself, uh, why not using some projects like KDE or GNOME? Or what is like the reasoning that drives forward uh, this project in particular? Yeah, so uh, like there are some features of Unity which simply are not present in other DEs, like you have the hard and the global menu, so many apps in other in other DEs which do support the global menu, for example, many of those DEs cannot uh, do not show the global menu in many apps which are supported by Unity. And uh, yeah, so I think I mentioned this. Uh, I think I mentioned this in a previous uh, in a previous article too. So basically, um, uh, uh, Unity was the first DE that I uh, that I used when I. Had, uh, Come to Linux, so I uh, started using Ubuntu 17.04, uh, which was still using uh, Unity 7, although it was the last release which was using Unity 7. 
So yeah, I really liked it compared to uh, Windows and it was much faster. I know uh, it is considered to be heavy, but it was way faster at the time. Uh, and I had a really small screen and the resolution was like 1366 by 768. So yeah, Unity was much better for smaller screens than other DEs at the time. Yeah, so that's I, I'm con- I actually used Unity when I was a, a, a child. Uh, on a very small laptop and it was rather slow with Windows. I actually spent some years with Unity and it was really nice to use. Yeah, so uh, like that's one of the main reasons why I'm continuing the development of Unity 7. Okay, and what are the things... Uh, well, first of all, what are you actually working on currently now that the uh, latest uh, release of Unity has been released? Like, is it uh, Ubuntu Web or... Yeah, I'm actually working on adding uh, many more apps to Modern, uh, to the new store which I developed, and uh, making some visual tweaks to it and making changes like adding a dark theme and other things because it uses Electron. And I'm wondering now, uh, what uh, what projects is... Uh, actually, let me ask that first. How many people are in these themes about uh, Ubuntu Unity, Ubuntu apps? Is it a smaller team or yeah so uh it's like uh we have uh we have a few more details and like we have tobio mike in the ubuntu unity community uh so tobio is also involved with ubiports apart from ubuntu unity and many other projects and we have alan carvalho our designer so yeah we are a small team uh we uh, so there are four or five people in our team and yeah mukta is from the yaru team too is a, a, was a part of the ubuntu unity team and is still developing the yaru unity team which is used by ubuntu unity okay and uh, what uh, is the upcoming progress for ubuntu unity as a whole what who do we see in the next releases yeah, so uh, we are planning to uh, slowly uh, make the Unity 7 design, for example, a bit more modern, add a few more features to it, and and maybe improve the HUD, for example, the uh, the results which are shown by the HUD, because, for example, uh, many of the GNOME apps, they simply do not work with the HUD. And also Firefox, so uh, we were, I was interested in uh, making a Firefox snap with the patch, with the open OpenSUSE um, menu patch for Unity 7. So yeah, that, those are the, some of the things which I'm planning to do uh, after Morton. Okay, and what about Ubuntu Web? Yeah, uh, as for Ubuntu Web, uh, so I am planning to add a few more features to its stores, for example, the store which is present in Ubuntu Web and improve the UI. And maybe even try KDE because uh, many of the GNOME extensions uh, break really frequently. So I was really interested in trying KDE or maybe even working on a on a desktop environment, which is uh, which is written using JavaScript. So I'm interested in that possibility too. Yeah, I mean, if you have any question about KDE implementation, if you want to ask me private uh, anytime, of course. And uh, yeah. so. GNOME extensions uh, do break for you frequently? Yeah. Uh, it's was actually, disc- yeah, it was something that I was um, investigating a bit because I heard that a lot. It, they didn't quite break for me, but I don't use a lot of them. So in, in your experience, you found that uh, they are fragile for, for like updates, I guess? Yeah, so uh, basically with every single new release of GNOME, all the existing extensions break until the extension developers update them to work with uh, with the new features and they remove features of the newer versions. Okay, okay. So another thing that I talk about in this channel is actually getting involved in open source as a whole, whatever project is it be. So I was wondering if you could share your story of how you got involved in open source, how you discovered it. Yeah, so uh, when I think I was around, I think seven or eight, I was making some really basic Android app uh, in like Java uh, on Windows with that same uh, crappy laptop, which I was talking mm-hmm. about right now. I first used Unity on, so I was using Windows back then. And I did come across uh, like one or two articles uh, related to this, uh, related to Linux distributions. And I just decided to try out Ubuntu, maybe I, I just decided to try it out. And yeah, uh, the, so I decided to try out Ubuntu 17.04. It was much faster. Mm-hmm. 
Unity uh, uh, Unity isn't that light, but it was way lighter than Windows because uh, I had like four gigs of them, uh, 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 five twelve gig hard disk. So yeah, Unity was much faster. So that's how it got started in the Linux community. Uh, I started developing Android apps on it and even made one or two toy kernels. Uh, and I then, uh, after one or two years, I, w- I started working on Ubuntu Unity and released the first one. Okay, so you actually started using Linux uh, as your main operating system since 2017? Yeah, since 2017. Yeah, that's actually interesting. It's, I think, about the same year that I started using Linux. So we, we have roughly the same, uh, how do you say it? Like a Linux streak or something? So, yeah. yeah. And um, what actually gives you the motivation to go forward in open source projects? Like, uh, if somebody comes and asks you, okay, but why should I contribute to something that's open source? I mean, I, I don't get paid. So what would, you, what would you tell them? Yeah, so it's like, uh, well, uh, the reason why I started uh, doing all of this was because when you're using Windows, for example, you can't change basically anything uh, and you can't make any tweaks to it. So uh, yeah, that's why uh, I've been contributing to open source stuff too. I've been adding more features and other things to open source software. So yeah, to uh, to add more customization, for example. So that's one of the reasons, for example. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Somehow it's also a bit of a, the reason why when I first started with Ubuntu, I kind of liked KDE a lot because, uh, yeah, sure, you can modify the code of any desktop, of course, but in KDE, you also have all of the UI to actually change it. So switching from Windows to KDE, it really felt like you had so much freedom uh, compared to before. And uh, so you started with Unity, right? Yeah, I started with Unity. And you, you do uh, like have a GNOME version of Ubuntu web, right? Yeah, Ubuntu web uses GNOME. Yep. What's your uh, experience with different desktop environments? Do you prefer one or do you use um, like many of them? Yeah, so uh, it's like... Uh, after Unity, I did try out KDE too, but uh, every single time I've used KDE, I've, I've either added too many um, too many themes, extensions, icons, and changed the font a lot, and made many other tweaks and broken the whole mm-hmm. uh, desktop. So that's one of the things which I've done with many of the KDE installations. So yeah, uh, and I'm uh, basically way more familiar with making changes from the command line, etc., for GNOME-based DEs and GNOME itself. Uh, compared to KDE, so yeah, I'm way more familiar with GDK uh, based desktops like XFCE, GNOME, Unity, etc. Have you ever tried something like Elementary OS? Uh... Yeah, I used to use Elementary OS too. Uh, after Ubuntu, I tried Elementary too. Uh, I tried Ubuntu and Elementary. So Elementary, uh, yeah, I found Elementary to be really stable until I decided to try to update to the beta version, which completely broke the whole system because they were not officially supporting it and uh, they were not officially supporting it. So I manually added the depository and all the icons and other stuff was completely broken after the update. So that was the last time I used the inventory. Okay, makes sense. And uh, another question that might seem weird and probably is like dumb, but uh, working on Ubuntu Unity and Ubuntu Web, one question that I have is, why not using actually Unity on the Ubuntu Web project? Yeah, so uh, like I mentioned earlier, one of the reasons was because uh, Unity, although it is, uh, even GNOME is not that light, but uh, yeah, first of all, I was way more familiar with GNOME and Unity than other DEs, so that's the reason why I chose GNOME. And Unity is a bit heavier than GNOME, I believe. So yeah, so I chose, Gun- uh, so I chose GNOME over that. Although GNOME 2 is just temporary until uh, I can figure out uh, the final DE or I start working on a JSDE, for example, for web apps. I'm actually looking into uh, Dahlia's, uh, Dahlia OS's uh, Pangolin desktop too. Uh, what's for- that? Yeah, so Pangolin is basically a desktop environment that is written in Flutter. It is uh, based on Fushia OS's uh, DE. Yeah. Plus, it's using that too for Ubuntu Web. Interesting. I didn't uh, actually know about it at all. And um, Ubuntu Web is a little bit meant as an alternative to Chrome OS, right? Yeah, like it supports Android apps 
and at the south too. And uh, how would do you like what kind of hardware do you think Ubuntu web is designed for? Like uh, if I see Chrome OS, it's usually usually like lower hand uh, device, but also convertibles and twin ones. Is that also the target goal of Ubuntu web? Yeah, so uh, I I often uh, test Ubuntu web and I'm using it on a 4 GB RAM laptop too, and it works perfectly fine. So and on a GPD pocket too with a uh, with a touch screen, so I haven't faced any issues. So the touch screen works really well. For example, there isn't a cursor that is being shown at all times. The on screen keyboard works really well. And yeah, so uh, that is also one of the reasons why I settled with GNOME because it is uh, like, I think one of the best DEs that uh, would support for touch screens because like many of the other X11 desktops like uh, like GNOME, even without, uh, even with X11, it has, uh, it, ha it, ha it makes things like, for example, uh, the cursor isn't visible when uh, things are being uh, touched and multi-touch works really well. So uh, that's one of the reasons why I went with GNOME 2. So yeah, it works really well on touch screens and on low-end hardware. Uh, does it run Wayland or X11? Yeah, so initially it was using X11, but now we mainly use Wizard for, because we, I mean Wayland, because we use Wizard for Android app. So I've actually compiled e, uh, E10 e for Wizard to be able to run EOS apps, which is basically a deep Google fork of, uh, of Android. So now it has, uh, it is able to run Android apps out of the box. Yes. Is it, uh, how many other distro does actually do actually do that? I'm I, I'm not aware of any other distro with an um, with Wedro Wedroid out of the box. Oh, uh, with Wedroid of VLAN. Uh, yeah. Of with Wizard of VLAN. So uh, yeah, Wedroid. Uh, they run many. Uh, I think this is the only one apart from Wizard Linux because. Yeah, because uh, like I mentioned earlier, this is meant to be an alternative to uh, Chrome OS, Google's Chrome OS. Yeah, that's why we have included Bedroid by default, and Bedroid uh, depends on VLAN, as the name suggests. So, yeah. Yeah, I've I've also found the uh, touch uh, experience to be much better in VLAN in general, depending on the mm -hmm. desktop, obviously, but still. And um, is there some Linux device that? Um, I mean, devices that do have Linux out of the box that you're following, that you're excited for lately. Some, like some Pine product. Some have you followed? Maybe the um, the Jingpad thing, uh, even though they're not on the market anymore. What do you think of the future of Linux devices? And is there any one of them that particularly interests you? Yeah, so I was actually working on a mobile OS too for Linux phones and tablets earlier. Uh, it was named Skull, uh, but I haven't completed it yet. And uh, and yeah, so I was following the, de uh, the development of Jingos. In fact, I'm in the Jingpad uh, Telegram Club too. So uh, sorry, you have? I'm in the Telegram Club too for Jingos. Okay. So uh, yeah, it's really too sad to see that uh, that it's already dead because uh, Jingos. Uh, I think it was one of the. Uh, one of the best chances for Linux to be uh, to uh, become popular on mobile devices. Uh, all the mo uh, uh, most devices. I'm actually living in India, and most of the devices they simply do not ship to India in the first place. So I think Pine and a few other companies, uh, many of them have uh, restrictions with shipping to India. So yeah, I haven't been able to get my hands on a Linux device. Yeah, that uh, makes it significantly harder, I guess. Yeah, it would actually be great if uh, they are sold on general purpose sites like Amazon, UAG, etc. But yes, that's going to happen way later or so. Okay. And um, what about the future of Linux devices? Like, uh, do you think that the current trend is a good one? Do we will, will we see sorry, uh, some new stuff coming around, in your opinion? Or, or some new stuff related to what? Uh, the, some new Linux devices, and if so, like what um, what kind of changes should Linux make, in your opinion, to better fit uh, future devices? Like, uh, if I think of a new um, tablet that runs Linux, and as an example, I actually have another time thinking that some 
uh, like GNOME or KD Plasma out of the box would work really well on such a device. Yeah, so uh, I th I do think System76 has the best future uh, because most of the devices which they're working on, apart from Slimbook and Tuxedo 2, they two are really similar. So yeah, so the devices which they're working on compared to other companies like Librem and others, so uh, most of the devices are aimed at general users instead of uh, developers, for example. Like uh, the Dell XPS Developer Edition, I really don't know why they've named it the Developer Edition, but yeah, and it doesn't even ship to India, even though the general XPS and all the other laptops do. So yeah, so uh, I think those are the future. If so, they just lower the price, for example, to be in line with general laptops, which I do think is not going to happen anytime soon because they because obviously they cannot uh, add telemetry and other stuff. To the uh, to the devices, so you do have to pay that Linux premium. But I do think they'd have a great future if, say, for example, they were listed on a general purpose sites for people to buy instead of people having to uh, have having to buy it directly from the website and wait for a long time for the devices to ship. For example, so I think that's one of the main factors. Okay. And uh, to wrap it up, is there any future project that you will, like don't know about, uh, like other than we the ones we talked about that you you want to talk about or? Yeah, so I am working on some stuff which I'm planning to release soon. So yeah, uh, like like for example, maybe a command line for a modern a command line version two in the Electron app. Yeah, uh, stuff like that. Uh, that's what I'm planning on working on. Nice. And do you have some general message? Like maybe do you want to share some links to check out some particular products? Is there anything you would like to say at the uh, at the end of this? Really? So uh, yeah, um, yeah. So you uh, you might definitely want to uh, check out uh, the th uh, modern, for example, and. Uh, so yeah, uh, I could provide maybe the links to the projects which I'm developing. And just one more thing, uh, I think it would be great if people try out Ubuntu 2204 with this release because it is much better than the previous releases like Ubuntu 21.10. So yeah, those are some of the things I wanted to say. Yep, I actually hope to have uh, a video about Ubuntu Unity, actually trying out Ubuntu Unity soon on my channel. and. Uh, Whilst waiting for that, thank you for your time and uh, really thank you so much because I, I got to say that, that green screen is really well done. <laughs> I was actually rather impressed. So oh, I'll actually, <laughs> it was actually the green screen. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 you can see mine too. So we both have like videos here currently with the green screen on the but yours actually edit out slightly better, I think. Still, as I was saying, thank you so much for your time. And uh, if you have like any question about KDE, which is what I work on, of course, uh, you can send me a message anytime. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Sure, thank you so much for inviting me. And, uh, and yeah, thank you everyone for watching this. Subscribe, yeah. those kind of things. But I mean, yeah. we know them, we know them.